Good evening, everyone. I am not fucking around with this one. But before I completely rip into the Labour government and kill the traitor Starmer, I want to put a couple of things out there. So first and foremost, let me be clear, because I know I've mentioned it in my last video and in a post that I've made. Let me be clear, I've not actually had it set in stone that I'm speaking up on the stage on the 26th of October. And it's not because I don't want to, far from it. And I'm sure a lot of people have already said that they want me to speak up there. But it's not down to me, folks. It's down to the people organizing that shit. So I can't make that decision. Of course, if they give me the opportunity to, then you bet your goddamn ass that I'm going to do so. And the second point in relation to that, make sure you share this video far and wide. WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. I want Tommy Robinson to notice, and I have that dream, and I reckon it will be a good one. Now that I've got that out of my system, let's begin tearing into the Labour Party by first expanding upon the title of this video. 600 million pounds of foreign aid going to Ukraine. 30, oh, sorry, 30? No, 3,000 pounds is being allocated so Labour can heat their own homes. 180, 185 grand or so is what the Labour MPs have to basically spend their expenses on and have the taxpayer pay for it. Things like a decent car, other luxuries, and of course, their second homes that these traitors love to hide behind. But absolutely sweet fuck all for the pensioners. Zero pounds to old granny and Ethel, who is gonna be sitting there freezing her knackers off in the middle of winter. <laughs> the Labour Party, more like the traitor party, if you ask me. In fact, Rachel Reeves even came out and said she's getting about 3,600 in heating her house. The same Rachel Reeves that in relation to the 22 billion pound black hole, the freedom of information request for that shit has been conveniently denied by, I believe, the Preston journalist. And I'll be linking that video it relates to in the description below. Now, when some people were saying it in the comments at first, I was a little skeptical because I want to see it verified for myself. But no, I can safely confirm that 600 million pounds of taxpayer money is being sent to Ukraine, to Zelensky, to the people who don't deserve it, to fund this fucking war and to make sure Zelensky has a comfy house, a nice car and all that shit. If you can afford 600 mil of our taxpayers' money to fund a war in Ukraine and to pay for Zelensky, who is having the audacity to make demands of the UK when he's not entitled to a fucking thing, then surely you have 300 quid to spare for the millions of pensioners who will no doubt suffer throughout winter. Keir the Traitor Starmer really is a complete subhuman piece of shit, bluntly speaking. And all the other traitors who voted for that motion, back that motion for houses with pensioners, they lose their 300 quid winter fuel payment. It disgusts me. It fucking disgusts me that there are politicians that are more interested in crippling us further for the sakes of virtue signaling and DEI and making sure they get fucking heating while Ethel and Beryl and whoever other fucking names I can think of have to sit there freezing their tits off in winter. Yeah, I'm a little bit pissed and that's putting it nicely. There are all manners of things I would like to do to cure the traitor Starmer. Unfortunately, I can't do them because a lot of them are illegal. But I know what isn't illegal, calling that fuckhead out for what he really is. Meanwhile, that little fuck bucket wants to sit there and project everything onto the far right and the Tories. You can't keep blaming everyone else 
for your fuck-ups, Keir the traitor Starmer. That's like getting your hand caught in the cookie jar, and then instead of taking responsibility and admitting, yeah, I tried to steal a cookie, you try to blame the cookie jar, saying, it fused to my hand. It's no wonder he can't put a fucking lid on it. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, Keir the traitor Starmer is resolve <laughs> stroke number one, is responsible for most of the shit that's been happening in this country over the last nine weeks. Tax hikes, cutting benefits, sending foreign aid off to people who don't deserve the money when we need to keep it at home and look after ourselves. Accepting a motion for free movement with the EU, trying to backtrack the Brexit vote and protecting your enemies instead of the people you're supposed to protect and serve. Who put this fuckhead in power? Seriously, oh wait, that would be the NPCs who voted him in. The people who have got more money than sense, I suspect. If I got a pound for every broken promise from every treacherous government that's been in power, I'd probably be living in a country house right now. Or at least I'd put down a deposit for one. It's like how vampires have no reflection when they look in the mirror. That's exactly the same for Keir the traitor Starmer. He has no reflection because he is not a man. And I'm at least glad that Nigel Farage had the bollocks to actually call Keir the traitor Starmer out on this two-tier policing and the two-tier estate that we're living in right now. When we pay taxes, we like to think that those taxes are going to a government that will actually do something for this country, that will do its civic duty to the British people. Instead, Keir the traitor Starmer is taking money from those who are put in the most to give it to the people who least deserve it. And while I accept Zelensky is not exactly the top of the list, that has to go to the illegal immigrants, all of which who have no legal or human right to be here, it doesn't change the fact that Keir the traitor Starmer and the traitor party, sorry, I mean Labour party, or maybe I was right first time, they would rather focus their efforts on securing that money for themselves or putting it towards wokery. But of course, the mainstream media won't tell you this. You know the drill, folks, because say it with me, it doesn't suit the narrative. The traitors in that party would rather see their own people wither and die than serve them. This is the disgusting, malicious, maligned nature of that traitor party headed by Keir the traitor Starmer. He, Keir the traitor Starmer, is the only person who should be facing arrest right now. Not Tommy Robinson, not Elon Musk, not concerned parents and patriots who wanted to actually feel for their kids, who wanted to put on a demonstration to say, when does this shit end? But for themselves. He is the only one, Keir the traitor Starmer, who should be arrested. He should be impeached. He should be charged with treason. And he should be swinging from the gallows, quite frankly. Or failing that, spending the rest of his life in jail. Because at the end of the day, he has broken the treason law, if it was still there. Remember, Tony the War Criminal Blair rescinded that, so that we were unable to charge him with treason. Bring back the traitor law, and we will see how many of these bastards we can lock up in our prisons. They want to release all the killers and rapists and child porn people and all that. Why don't we start letting out some of the far-right people who rioted, some of the people who are being put in jail for posting memes, the political prisoners, why don't we remove some of them and start taking out the trash from our streets? Starting at the very top with Keir, the traitor, Starmer. Because whether he wants to accept it or not, he has broken multiple laws. Not just the traitor law, he has incited hatred towards ordinary British people. He has endangered the, con the country through, obviously, national security and what have you, and allowing foreign invaders into our country. 
and he has effectively committed fraud by falsely promising he would be, and I quote, a Prime Minister of the working class. Yes, some working class Prime Minister you are. The only class I would put you in care is the traitor class. Because you serve your traitorous little party who has zero interest in, ser in serving the British people and all the interest in the world in protecting Islam and the illegal immigrants and reversing the biggest vote in British history, that of the Brexit referendum. You want to sit here and say you don't have 300 quid for the pensioners who could potentially freeze to death this winter, but you've got 600 million to give to Ukraine. Yeah, I call bull on that. There we go, much better. Now I can actually not worry about the rain. Anyway, he is a man of the traitor class. Keir has no right to be serving as our Prime Minister. I can't believe I'm going to say this. I'd rather have Tony Blair than him. At least Tony Blair did a few things right, whereas Keir the traitor Starmer has done fuck all for this country, except put an anchor around our boots in the hopes to sink us. Obviously, if I had my way, I'd have Nigel Farage in power, but it's a sad state of affairs when I would literally rather have Tony Blair in power rather than Keir the traitor Starmer. God, what a dark age we live in. And speaking of dark ages, by constantly appeasing to Islam and the illegal immigrants, we're not progressing our society. We're not progressing our technological advancement, we're regressing everything. We're regressing our communities, our technologies, our social status. We're regressing how far we can go as a nation. We're regressing our power in the world, all because we're pandering to people who do not deserve to be here, as well as an, a religion that is intolerant of the West. But of course, these are all facts that the mainstream media don't want to tell you about because they're obviously biased. Speaking of media bias, what about the fact that the BBC is trying to say that Donald Trump is shaken after confident Harris in the US elections? Last time I checked, the mainstream media need to be impartial and unbiased. But of course, since it's Keir the Traitor Starmer's media now, we've got about as much chance of seeing impartiality from the BBC as I have of going to the moon in a rocket. I may have mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again if necessary, but I have never, ever felt so much resentment and rancour towards an establishment as I have this Labour government. And that is really saying something, considering we had Rishi the Slippery Sunak, who had no fire in him whatsoever. In fact, it was pretty much a glacial ice age within him. No passion, no ambition, another robot that reads off a script. Keir the Traitor Starmer is that tenfold. He needs a script because the man wouldn't know what the fuck to say towards the British people if he actually had to stand by his own damn values. That's why he needs help to write this shit. I don't. I can say this off the cuff. I can say this because it's my actual beliefs. I can say it because it is effectively what I fundamentally believe in. Just like how all the others in the supposed far right, like Tommy Robinson and Paul Thorpe and Maya and Carl Benjamin, are able to say things as they see it. Because they believe in what they believe. They say what they believe in. They actually stand by their beliefs. Keir the traitor Starmer would sell us a fucking 10 bob note as a 500 pound bob note. He would literally sell us silver and claim it was 24 karat gold because he's that much of a lying sack of shit, bluntly speaking. Yeah, I'll say it because Unlike a lot of people, and I'm sure some people can say it with me, I'm not going to sugarcoat a motherfucking thing. I'm not going to mince my words. I will say it exactly how it is, and I will do my best not to bullshit you. And what I see 
is I see a party full of traitors who want to see Granny die over the winter. 4,000 of them die over the winter because they couldn't be bothered out of the £90,000 some of these Labour MPs get in their salaries, the 180 or so allowance they get, which gets paid for by the taxpayers in expenses, and the £3,000 they get to heat their own homes, they can't be bothered to part with 300 of that. Now, I admit and accept there's only a certain number of MPs versus way more of the British public. I could compromise that shit. But here's the thing. You could easily half the salaries of these MPs and half their allowance for heating costs and you could halve the costs that they're allowed to claim frankly I'd get rid of all of them because why should they be entitled to anything but you could get rid of 90 to 180 grand in their expenses they can claim you could easily give that money out to all of the pensioners even if you only do it to like half the MPs but that's something that obviously evades these people because common sense is becoming increasingly uncommon over these upcoming years. What will it take for the ordinary Brit to wake up from the matrix? What will it take for them to take the red pill and understand what a colossally fucked up establishment we're currently under right now? I... Sometimes it really blows my mind how some people could think, oh, we better vote for Labour because they're definitely better than the Tories. I, I think I would rather have no party than the Labour Party in power. I'd rather a hung parliament. I'd rather have anything else other than the Labour Party. I'd rather have Rishi the Slippery Sunak for another four years. Yes, he may be passionless. Yeah, he may be a shill. But you know what he isn't? He isn't someone who's going to get rid of your free speech. He isn't going to be somebody who's going to let pensioners freeze to death. He isn't going to be somebody who lets out 1,700 violent criminals for some of these people within the hour to commit offences. It's, You know what it reminds me of? That meme, the surprise Pikachu face. Oh no! Violent criminals? have now been released, and now they're committing violence? I never would have known! But don't worry, Keir the traitor Starmer. Keep blaming it on the far right and the Tories. Keep blaming it on them for your fuck-ups, for your traitorous party's inability to put the people first and put this country first. And Lee Anderson puts a very good point across. Why don't we get rid of some of those foreign prisoners that we've got? that are taking up the taxpayers' money. Why don't we take out the trash, remove them from our country, send them back to their country of origins? Because clearly we don't want these people. We don't want parasites. We want contributing, working people who are gonna pay into the system, respect our beliefs, and respect us as a people. And of course it's now starting to piss it down the rain, now I'm talking about this shit. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, Keir the traitor Starmer could easily fix the country, but he's a Marxist lawyer, not a Prime Minister. I mean, does it, does it really surprise anyone that he tried, or was considered, to be a lawyer for Jimmy Savile? Is it any surprise that Keir the traitor Starmer is in cahoots with Tony the War Criminal Blair? Is it really any surprise that Keir the traitor Starmer wants to put Islam before ordinary working class people? I don't think so at this point. And as I said before, back in the past, maybe like four or five years ago, maybe you could technically say, I shouldn't be speaking this shit on the bus. That I shouldn't be speaking about this place in places that are inappropriate. But as I said before, we're now in a situation where we don't have that luxury anymore. We're in a situation where if we don't start doing something, we don't start speaking to more people, we don't let our voices be heard in places like this, this country will flounder, or founder, or whatever you want to call it. I don't think it's an unreasonable thing to ask, 
Fakir the traitor Starmer to put his own people first. Or, well, by his own people, I mean us. The indigenous British people. Not Islam. Not one section of the community. The entire country. That's what makes Keir the traitor Starmer a sectarianist bastard, bluntly speaking. Because he is protecting a religion rather than the people. He is a fascist because he wants to silence his political opponents. And that's also why Muslim faith leaders, including the General Secretary for the Muslim Council of Britain, wants to have Tommy Robinson arrested. Which, frankly, we should not have a Muslim Council of Britain. We shouldn't have any Council of Britain that involves religion. Because religion and politics do not mix. Thank you. Oh, now I've got to walk through this shit. But the cold bit of truth is, Keir the traitor Starmer is only going to serve himself and the traitor party. Because that's what it boils down to. He's not interested in what we believe, what we think. He'd rather arrest us. He'd rather deplatform us. He'd rather summon Elon Musk to have him face allegations of being far right. Just another day in Norwich, where it almost never snows, almost always rains, and the bus service is shit. Now I accept not every Labour MP is a traitor. There is that one exception who decided to vote against taking away the £300 from the pensioners of ye current times. But it's like I said before, the one that pisses me off the most is the fact that my nan is going to have to sit there without that winter fuel payment that she might well damn need. But here Keir the Traitor Starmer is, pissing up our money, pissing it up the wall, sending it off to Ukraine when they have no right to our money. And frankly, the Russia war, we should be keeping our fucking noses out of that shit. Because it's not our business. Now, of course, if Putin is going to go out of his way to threaten all the West, like he has levied threats against the UK, saying he wants to target some of our bases, then yeah, we do need to take notice of that shit. But here's the thing. This war, this ongoing masquerade in Eastern Europe, the only reason that shit is taking place is two reasons. One is he wants the annexation of whatever nation that he wants to get rid of. And of course the fact that Putin has got more and more Western weapons parked at his front door. With Ukraine joining NATO, it is basically the whole of Europe might as well have their guns literally pressed up to the fucking door at this point and say, little pig, little pig, let us in. That's the way I look at it. Of course, Vladimir Putin is going to feel threatened and backed into a corner. And even a cornered rat will show its fangs when cornered, when it's forced to fight. And you know what? That's something else as well that we need to talk about. Because... Everyone seems to think it's okay nowadays, and by everyone I mean the wokerati, the NPCs, the celebrities who have no taste, are treacherous politicians, etc, etc. They all seem to think it's okay to go after old whitey. Oh, but perish the thought that they get any backlash, or the backlash is at Islam... Oh, then they pull out all the dog whistle terms, like racist, fascist, Islamophobe, blah, blah, blah. Isn't it funny how they seem to find it acceptable to continue demonising the white working class? You know, what the vast majority of this country is? White working people, including myself? Because after all, how else would I have that? high-vis jacket, though to be fair I did buy it before I went into the job, but it doesn't change the fact that I would have been required to have one anyway. So that's that point put aside. But I think they should be thankful, quite frankly, that the white working class hasn't just straight up fucking rebelled against this government, or the other governments for that matter, considering the amount of fucking abuse we get. 
And this isn't to play the victim like a lot of people in certain communities love to do, especially Islam. But this is, as a matter of factly, point of view. The white working class gets a shitload of abuse. We get called Nazis, we get called far right, we get called fascists, we get called scum, all sorts of names. They don't think of the consequence of them. They don't go and arrest people for calling us names. But perish the thought, somebody calls out Islam, or somebody calls out the traitor class. Oh, then they will send the boys round to kick your doors down. The only difference is they don't break your legs. Unless they're a real bunch of crooked cunts. Then they might do. My point is, how is it acceptable that we treat one class of people with utter contempt while we treat DEI with kid gloves? Please explain that to me. This is why I say... They should be thankful the white working class hasn't just straight up rebelled. Whether it's peaceful resolution or violent revolution. And let me be absolutely clear. I do not want a violent revolution. I've mentioned this many times before. I do not want a violent revolution. I want this to end peacefully. But the cold bitter truth is, if this doesn't get solved peacefully in the next two to five months, it's going to get nasty. Mark my words. It will end up turning into a violent revolution because we have a psychopath at the moment running this country. Any sane person with even a single brain cell in here would categorically see how pissed off the British people are getting right now. Note that kettle for later. But the truth is, Keir the Traitor Starmer is a lunatic. He is the asylum person. He is the lunatic literally running the asylum here. He is the nut job running this country right now. And he doesn't give a fuck about the working class. No matter how many times he says it, it's always going to appear the same message to us. I'm pretending to, to care for the working class when this is what I think of them. That's Keir the Traitor Starmer in a nutshell. If these people had rebelled, Keir, you'd be lucky if you didn't see your head on a spike. Because that's what a lot of these people think of you. They want you dead. Or at least deplatformed and dethroned from the houses of treachery. I mean Parliament. Or maybe again I was right first time. You should be thankful. Because if it were down to them, you wouldn't be here anymore. Be thankful. Be very thankful. Because right now, it is like this boiling kettle I've got over here. Something's going to give eventually before the lid blows. And just like that, your country, or sorry, your reign over this country will end. If they had rebelled, you'd be gone. I cannot stress that enough. Be thankful. Count every fucking day you have, Keir the Traitor Starmer, as a blessing. Because as each passing day goes on, tensions are boiling over like that kettle. And you're becoming more and more cooked with each passing day. 200 degrees in the oven. 15 minutes. Ding. You're done. It's not a matter of if now. It's a matter of when. It's a matter of how long are you going to be able to survive. This is no longer a can I stay in power for five years. This is a matter of how long can I stay in power before I am forced to resign. But as I've said before as well. The secondary really scares me. Because if Keir the traitor Starmer is not in power, who do you think is going to replace him? Let that sink in for a moment. 
And let me give you something that I have said in the past as a potential worst case scenario. Sadiq Khan. Think about it. Rishi the Slippery Sunak was not going to be our Prime Minister originally. We had Boris Johnson. But then as soon as he cleared out, look what we got. We got Rishi Sunak. So it stands to reason that Keir the Traitor Starmer could pull a Boris Johnson on us and then replace his seat, give it to Sadiq Khan. And we already know what his terrorist links are. Links to the 7-7 seven, seven bombers families, of one of them at least. We know for a fact that he waged war against the motorist, even pissing our taxpayer money up the wall again by hiring security to protect the ULES cameras, which were deemed to be unlawful. And yet that snake still continues to try and push his war on the motorist. A man who constantly pushes DEI and wokery rather than doing his duty as the mayor of London and make sure stroke number two, make sure that the Metropolitan Police Chief Mark Rowley, Mark Extreme Right Rowley, does his fucking job. Sadiq Khan would rather push through Oh, look at, is, uh, look at the wonderful things that Islam has brought us. No, we're not going to look at the wonderful things Islam has brought us because they're few and far between. Unlike the terrorist attacks that have been happening all around the world because of Islam and its intolerant death cult beliefs. Believing that they should give gay people a free first class ticket from the top of a building to the ground. Or they should be stoned to death. Or that white women can be taken as sex slaves. Or the fact that they can beat their wives. And it's perfectly acceptable. What about honour killings? What about acid attacks? What about the fact that they basically want to wage jihad against the West? Yeah, let's ignore that and talk about all the wonderful things that Islam has done, Sadiq Khan. Now I just need a nodding dog. Anyway, the point is, the fact this man could potentially replace Sadiq Khan, uh, sorry, replace Keir the Traitor Starmer, is something that should make people feel extremely uncomfortable. Can you imagine if that fucker gets into power? Oh my god, if there was an anchor around our feet with Keir the Traitor Starmer in power, Having Sadiq Khan in power would be like wearing cement boots. An old mafia trick that I think still goes on to this day. Where basically people would put people they want to get rid of, they put them in shoes, fill them with cement, throw them into the ocean, and they drowned. They had no chance of getting out. That's what we'd be doing to this country if we put Sadiq Khan in power. But people want to sit here and say, yeah, we're going to vote him out the next election. We're going to vote him out in five years time. Wake the fuck up. Quite frankly. Five years is merely wishful thinking. Nothing more. You'll be lucky if you have one year. Let alone five. And frankly, I believe we've got five months at most to make this work. We've got one, maybe two other protest tops. To get a peaceful resolution. Think of Keir the traitor Starmer like Adolf Hitler. We tried talking to him. He invaded Poland anyway. And he didn't do it off of spiritual beliefs. He did it with boots on ground. Do you think Keir the traitor Starmer is going to give a shit about whether we despise him or not? That's the way I look at it. He's already shown his contempt for ordinary Brits. He's now plunged the knife and twisted even harder into the elderly's hearts by taking away their £300 while having their £3,000 allowance for heating and sending £600 million to Ukraine. Do you honestly think that is a man we can reason with? 
The only thing we can do right now, as far as Keir the Traitor Starmer is concerned, is two things. One, put pressure on him. Put an exorbitant amount of pressure on him. Like the immense pressure that goes into coal when they're trying to make diamonds. We need to put him under that same pressure. And two, we need to go to our MPs and tell them how much of a monumental fuck-up Labour are. We need to showcase to this government and the world the danger that Keir the Traitor Starmer is. Because to use Yusuf's own words, or sorry, Useless's own words, and I know I was right that time. He is a very, very dangerous man. Keir the Traitor Starmer is probably the most dangerous man, as well as the most hated man, in this country right now. And we need to do everything we can to get rid of him. Obviously, I prefer through peaceful means. But I'm worried there are going to be people out there who will go to the other end of the spectrum if you catch my drift. Which I will not condone. I will condemn anybody who resorts to breaking the law and committing violence. But I will completely understand why they feel so passionately about that as I do this. That is effectively me wiping my hands clean. I am not going to accept responsibility for people going out of their way and doing the wrong things. Because I have condemned it. I have condemned the people who have committed genuine acts of law-breaking. I have condemned the people who have hijacked those riots, or sorry, the protests, in Southport, Liverpool, Stoke-on-Trent, just to name a few. Because we shouldn't be sending a message of violence and thuggery. I want it to be peaceful. I've said this many times. But Keir the traitor Starmer seems to be hell-bent for leather. To try and force our hand. And as I said. He should be thanking each and every fucking day. That he hasn't had a violent revolution. Because I don't think he'd survive that. I really don't. I don't think he'd survive. I think as soon as the people come in there. Tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. He is going to be in a whole world of trouble. I mean, the Secret Service barely was able to protect Trump, although it was clearly found out that the Secret Service were actually stitching old Trump up. And that was against one person. What do you think Keir the Traitor Starmer is going to be able to do? No amount of Royal Guard or Army is going to stop the people from getting the man they want. That's the cold, bitter truth. And I do think, unfortunately... I want to be optimistic. Believe you me, I want to. But I'm not an optimist at heart. I'm not a Christian at heart. I am probably more agnostic more than anything. I do believe there was a creator, but I am not of any religion in particular. And I do not have optimistic views. I am a realist. Not a pessimist, not an optimist. A realist. And realistically speaking, I think we are reaching a point where we are going to see civil war. Unfortunately. Of course, I don't want to believe that. I don't want to accept that. I don't want to condone that. But I think that cold bitter truth that even I'm going to have to swallow, unfortunately, is not a multivitamin tablet. But it's going to be... Oh, and that smells something fucking awful. I think I need to chuck these out. Anyway, the fact of the matter is... We're all going to have to take that cold, bitter pill called the truth. We're going to have to take that bitter pill and most definitely swallow it. We will most definitely have to swallow this shit. Just as Keir the traitor Starmer is going to have to. This civil war that's brewing, the blood is going to be on Keir the traitor Starmer's hands. And even if the civil war doesn't happen... I think he's going to have a few hundred, if not a few thousand, lives of blood, pensioners' blood, on his hands. And then he will have to swallow that bitter pill that says he's a murderer on an even worse level than Harold Shipman. <laughs>